Hold on, I'll be on Zoom today. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Why are you dressed like this? <laughs> you got plans for the evening, huh? Maaz, Maaz said you're going to make fun of me. Yeah, I am. He's right. <laughs> oh, look at this shit, man. What the fuck? I'm dressed, dressed up all for you, bro. Thank you, but I don't care. All right, let's start. Uh, okay, so I guess this is everyone for today then. Let's let's give them another minute to try. So that's like five people, including me and you. I think I think I think they're they're studying for for their they have astrology this week, right? Yes. Do you guys have astrology this week? Yeah, they do. Sign's gonna be recorded, so should be okay. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna start then. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to be going over um, questions that I could get my hands on. Uh, the questions that I could get my hands on uh, from your test so that we can review them and um, go over how to do them exactly. All right, so first question. There we go. So the first question was about acidosis and alkalosis, and it said metabolic alkalosis usually results in. Okay, so how we think about this question is in your head, okay, you need to be able to memorize or understand all these tables, okay? So first of all, what's acidosis, what's alkalosis? We've already been through it, okay? So when pH goes down, acidosis. pH goes up, alkalosis, okay? There, there's reasons where, why pH goes down or up, okay? We know that carbon dioxide, if carbon dioxide is high, pH will go down, meaning it's, it's um, respiratory acidosis if CO2 goes up, okay? And if uh, bicarbonate ions uh, go down, meaning that you will also get acidosis, but metabolic acidosis, because you cannot, um, you don't have enough bicarbonate ions. Okay. And alkalos alkalosis is exactly the opposite. CO2 is down, then you cannot, um, you don't have enough CO2 to maintain your blood pH. The pH goes up, alkalosis, uh, if it, because CO2 is low, then it's respiratory alkalosis. If it's because bicarbonate ions, you cannot get rid of the bicarbonate ions out of the system and the concentration increases, you'll get metabolic, metabolic alkalosis, okay? And then you have the causes and the symptoms, all right? So first of all, uh, we need to look at the uh, options we have. It says, okay, so metabolic alkalosis. Now I'm, I'm thinking uh, pH is high because it's alkalosis. Metabolic means that we cannot remove the HCO3 uh, minus ions, bicarbonate ions, we cannot remove them. Okay, so let's read the let's read the rest of the question. When the respiratory system is unable to eliminate adequate amounts of CO2, that means CO2 is high, which would lead to acidosis, not alkalosis, from hyperventilation. Hyperventilation is is actually one of the of the causes of uh, respiratory alkalosis because uh, CO2 is high, you is low, you're getting rid of too much, okay, and therefore you cannot maintain your blood pH. So that's wrong because that's uh, respiratory alkalosis. From excess production of acidic substance, when you produce an acid, then surely the pH would go down. Acid acidosis. So it's wrong. It's got to be the last one from the rapid elimination of H plus from the body. Okay. So um, you don't have enough H plus ions in, in your in your blood, and for that, uh, it increases the pH and leads to uh, metabolic alkalosis. It's not respiratory. But it's not a uh, fault in the in the respiratory system, the lungs still function. And here are some of the symptoms of um, respiratory acidosis and respiratory alcohol. 
hyperbolic acidosis, metabolic acidosis. Okay. So this obviously I'm gonna share share this uh, presentation. This slide is important um, if you want to know the difference between acidosis and alkalosis. Okay, moving on. Now we have um, this question. It says the release uh, of H plus can combine the released uh, protons can combine with bicarbonate ions to form uh, hydrogen bicarbonate again, which can break down to water and carbon dioxide. This is exactly what happens at the lungs because you need to release that water vapor and carbon dioxide. Uh, this reaction is catalyzed by, okay, so this, this is a, a knowledge question. There's not much to know about this. Uh, carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme that catalyzes the formation of CO2 and water from um, hydrogen bicarbonate. And interesting facts, uh, you also might get asked about this. The prosthetic group for carbonic anhydrase is zinc. Okay, so it needs zinc to function. If you zinc, if the zinc in your blood gets too low, you will not be able to produce carbon dioxide and water from hydrogen bicarbonate, and therefore you will have a higher concentration of uh, hydrogen ions in your body because uh, you'll have the hydrogen bicarbonate, which then dissociate, and you'll get acidosis. Okay, so... Uh, and then you have another, another question. This, this question is actually, um, it's a good question. It says, oxidation of galactose with bromine uh, yield. Okay, so it says here, this is a hint, weak oxidation. Okay, so first of all, we need to know the difference between all of these. Okay, so galactose is a saccharide. Okay, and saccharides can get oxidized to form either aldehydes or, well, if they're key, ketones, they, they can form aldehydes or uh, carboxylic acids. Okay, so here we have a group of acids and we need to know which one is the product of um, galactose. So first of all, if I'm, this is the structure of galactose, the one that I'm putting out here. If I was to just guess which carbon is the weakest, which one would it be? These are all in the chain, okay? But this one isn't, okay? So this one is most susceptible to oxidation. First of all, I can eliminate gluconic acid because gluconic, from the name gluco, coming from glucose, okay? I can eliminate this. Now, the difference between galactonic, galactonic, and galactronic is as follows, okay? First of all, galactonic is the one that you see here. You have this carbon. It has been oxidized and therefore becomes a carboxylic acid, okay? As you can see here, okay? That's a carboxylic acid, B-O-O-H, okay? If you, if you don't know what carboxylic acid means, um, then you can go back to one of my lectures where I go over the um, functional groups and you'll find the presentation on the, um, on the resources website. Galactaric, galactaric, meaning that you have carboxylic acid on both sides. And this happens when you have a strong oxidant. You're oxidizing uh, it very strongly. So it gets, it, it gets oxidized on both carbons at the end of the chain. Okay, and galacturonic will have one of them being carboxylic acid, one the other one being an aldehyde. Okay, so that's the difference between these three. And gluconic we can eliminate because it comes from glucose. Okay, next. Uh, name the glucose reduction product. Okay, so this one is tough because it requires you to know um, the structure of these. Okay, so this is from the... Um, from the presentation that we had before, okay? And it lists uh, some of the most important saccharides or monosaccharides in this case. Uh, first of all, we can look at glucose. You can see the structure of glucose here, okay? So when it says name the glucose reduction product, we're reducing it. So we're getting uh, rid of an oxygen or we're adding a hydrogen, okay? So the one that has the same structure but has one extra oxygen is what? Sorbitol, okay? So this is just, you need to know, mannitol from mannose. So if you reduce mannose, you'll get mannitol. If you reduce glucose, you'll get sorbitol. Okay, xylose, xylitol. Oh. Okay, next question. Oh yeah, if you guys have any questions, please stop me or uh, write something in the chat. Okay, so this is, this is also um, not an easy question. It says, the kidneys regulate what concentration in blood plasma to protect the organism from metabolic disorders, okay? Um, so first of all, we have, we can start, we can eliminate the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, okay? Because there, there's no gases in, in the kidney, at least not 
um, not gases anyways. Okay, so the three that we have here is the carbon, the the carbonate ions, okay, uh, or the phosphate ions, okay, and two two forms of phosphate ions, okay, hydrogen phosphate, hydrogen one phosphate, hydrogen two. So yeah, uh, first of all, I can eliminate the carbonate. Why? Because this is the this capillary, okay, uh, mean it when okay, look at when you see this this um, equation, okay, and you see that the carbonate ions uh, fuse from inside the capillary or are actively transported from inside the the kidneys into the capillary surrounding it, meaning that they get reabsorbed, so they return back into the blood. Okay, so therefore the kidneys doesn't play a role, a direct role in regulating. Okay. However, when during the dissociation of uh, the carbonate ions in the kidneys, the, the hydrogen carbonate in the kidneys, you contribute to the uh, hydrogen phosphate ions, okay? So because this dissociates and it releases uh, hydrogen, it then gets dissociated outside into the, uh, the lumen that then goes into the urine, okay? Before it, it controls the, the concentration of this of the hydrogen phosphate. Okay. So the answer to this question is the first question. I hope that makes sense. I didn't explain it very well. Okay, so uh, is an example of uh, first of all, for again, if you don't know what aldoses and ketoses mean, then please go back to um, the lecture on my YouTube channel and hopefully uh, you'll find it in I think the second lecture, first or second lecture. Okay, so aldoses meaning that they're aldehydes, meaning that they have the, the double bond oxygen at the end of the chain. Ketoses meaning that they have in the middle. Okay, so first of all, I need to count the number of the carbons one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a hexose. So I can straight away get rid of the pentoses. I can eliminate them. I'm, I'm th in, in, my, in my head, I'm saying it cannot be those. Okay, um, and the double bond oxygen is in the middle of the chain, it's not at the end. If it was at the end, it would have been an aldose, right? It's a ketose, okay? So it's a keto hexose, this one. Yeah, this one, this question here. Uh, there's not really a way to figure out. You just have to know this. Uh, this is, this is hyaluronic acid. This is a structure of hyaluronic acid. Okay. Now we, we've got a question here, which is answered incorrectly. Name the mannose reduction product. If we go back to the table with the, Structures of the sugars, you will see that mannose, when reduced, produces mannitol. Okay, mannose, uh, aldose, produces mannitol, alcohol. Okay, so this reduction. Aldehyde, yes, reduced to primary alcohol. Again, if you don't know what that means, it means go back to my um, video. Okay, so uh, that's for that question. Name the mannose reduction product, it is mannitol. Uh, yeah, here we have the structure of hyaluronic acid. This is from the lecture, by, uh, by the way. So for your next uh, exam or for your final, refer to the lectures from the teachers and um, from the little explanations that we do here. So normal urine glucose levels for non-diabetics is between. This question is answered correctly, okay? If it was asking for the blood levels of glucose in the blood, it would have been a different story. However, it's asking in urine. You're not supposed to have glucose in your urine, or you you're supposed to have very little. Because uh, there is, okay, so if we think about the structure of the kidney, you, you don't have to know this now, but it's for your information. Uh, there is something called Bowman's capsule, and there's something called the glomerulus. Glomerulus is basically like a mesh of networks of capillaries and other connective tissue. And what that, that does is that it filters large molecules from the blood. So glucose doesn't get through. Most proteins do not get through only one, the uh, HCG, which tells you if you're pregnant or not. And that's how pregnancy tests work, okay? So you're not supposed to have a lot of glucose in your body, okay? So it's zero to 0 0.8 millimoles per liter in your, in your urine, sorry. <laughs> okay, so again, this question doesn't have that much knowledge to it, really. If you refer back to the teacher's lectures or the presentations, um, this is the structure of uh, chondroitin sulfate. I don't know how to pronounce it. And yeah, this is exactly what the, what the question is asking. Right. 
in a bit. Okay, crowded. There we go. So the oxidation of galactose with concentrated um, nitric acid yields what? And it gives us another hint, hint here. It says strong oxidant, okay? Well, first of all, we have a question similar to this. If we go back, the one with bromine, it asks, it asks us, what? No, come on. There we go. Oxidation of um, galactose, galactose with uh, bromine yields what? Okay, and it tells it's weak oxidant. We know that galactonic acid is this structure where it gets a carboxylic acid only at one um, end of the chain, which is the weakest carbon. Okay, galactaric, you get one uh, carboxylic acid, and this is kind of in between. I'm sorry, galactaric, you get carboxylic acids at both um, ends of the chain. Galacturonic, you get a carboxylic acid at the end and an aldehyde at the end. Again, if you don't know what carboxylic acid or aldehyde means, go back to the lecture, I think the third or second one, and you will find um, the functional groups and what they mean and refer back to that. Okay. And galacturonic is uh, one aldehyde and one carboxylic. Okay. So it says a uh, strong oxidant in the question that we were looking at. Strong. Okay. So instead of, we know it's not going to be uh, galactonic because that's weak oxidation. Okay. And it's only carboxylic acid in one group. Okay. And it's not going to be gluconic because gluconic comes from glucose. Okay. Which isn't correct, obviously, because we have galactose. And then galacturonic, which is one carboxylic acid and one aldehyde. Okay. Carboxylic acid and carboxylic acid is obviously the, the one that is produced when you have very strong oxidation. So we're going to go with that one. So it's galactaric acid. Okay. Okay, so this one, um, the state of lowered potassium level in the blood serum is defined as, so potassium has the symbol K, okay? So it's, and hypo means low, hyper means high. So hypokalemia, I can get that it's low potassium, okay? Hyponatremia means low sodium because sodium has Na, okay? Hyperkalemia, that means high uh, potassium. Hypernatremia means high sodium, okay? And then you got another question. That's question So that's high sodium, high sodium, okay? And then sodium, Na, natremia, okay? So it's hypernatremia. Um, okay, so now we're talking about homogeneous solutions. So homogeneous solutions are solutions that contain the same type of solute. They, they don't, first of all, you have a, that you mix into a solution and that forms a stable solution. You don't get any um, par precipitates, <laughs> okay? So an example of that would be a cup of coffee, perfume, cough syrup, yes, all of these. So it's the second option because uh, solutions are, uh, homogene homogeneous solutions are solutions with non-uniform composition. This is not correct, okay? Non-uniform, also not correct. Uniform, uh, Composition and properties throughout the solution, correct? For example, water and chalk. Water, okay, chalk precipitates. Uh, and solution of water and sand. If you ever put sand in water, it doesn't dissolve. Okay, so it's not really a solution. So it, it must be the second one. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, and then oh, it's not supposed to be here. Yeah, there we go. So name the dichloride type of linkage between. Okay, so first of all, uh, we're supposed to know that this structure is glucose, and this is also glucose, okay? And this is the first carbon, and this is the one, two, three, four. This is the fourth carbon, okay? So it's alpha one to four, because between the first and the fourth carbon, first carbon of the, of the first uh, glucose and the fourth carbon of the second glucose. So it's alpha one to four, and I know that it's glucose and glucose always produces maltose. Respiratory alkalosis. So again, that relates to the first question that we did. Um, we can go back to that if you want. There we go. Respiratory alkalosis results from. So first of all, respiratory alkalosis here. Okay. Uh, symptoms include uh, tachycardia or increased heart rate, uh, restlessness, hyper hypoventilation. So you're not ventilating or breathing enough. You know, and causes. Uh, it comes from severe vomiting or uh, excessive, wait, no, that's metabolic, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
holidays. Yeah, so wristbands, now closes. Uh, here you have the, the signs. You, always, you also have tachycardia, and at this time, hyperventilation, so increased rate of uh, respiration. Okay. And then we can go back to the question to see what it's really asking. So now we know what we're thinking about acidosis alkalosis. <clears throat> so respiratory alkalosis uh, resulted from overproduction of acidic substance. This is obviously wrong because if you produce acidic substances a lot, acidic acidosis, okay? So that produces acidosis. It's caused by the rapid elimination of um, H plus from the body. It doesn't matter whether that's acidosis or alkalosis. It's a metabolic reason. It doesn't come from anything in the respir respiratory system. So this is wrong too, because here is, re is referring to respiratory alkalosis. Results from hyperventilation. Well, we just said that it does. So this is the right one. And then the last one says, occurs when respiratory system is unable to eliminate adequate amounts of CO2. Well, if you're not going to be able to expel carbon dioxide, then it's going to um, uh, react with water and form hydrogen carbonate, which then dissociates and increases the pH. Okay, and that's the bicarbonate buffer system. You can refer back to that from the lectures. Okay, okay, and now um, we know that this one is results from hyperventilation, and this, the question under it is the exact same. Okay, now it says name the disaccharide and um, type of linkage between the sugar units. First of all, uh, when we look at this, we can we can refer back to the. The other question, I think it's the same question. Uh, no, it's not. Because here you have a pen. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. You can go back to the, the chart. And then you'll see one, two, three, four, five. Here you have the pentoses, okay? And the pentose that we're talking about is ribose. And compare them here. So this is ribose and this is glucose. Glucose and ribose forms glucose. Correct. So it's not so close. Ribose and glucose. What's the dissector? Let me look that up actually. Uh -huh. Okay, so it is sucrose. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so we have sucrose and then we can count them on the carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the first carbon that's participating in the bond. And you have one, one, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth carbon. So it's one to five. Okay, and that's this is fractal, it's not fibers, because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, has six carbons. So just to know what to do with it. So I didn't count that carbon. But yeah. So this is uh, sucrose because you have glucose and fructose and one to five alpha, one to five glycidic bond, not one to two, okay, one to five. One, one two, three, four, five. Okay, so um, normal blood. Okay, so now we're talking about blood glucose. This is, this is answered correctly, first of all. It's 3.9 to 5.5, that's true. And for your information, for, for, for your reference, would it harm? to uh, be familiar with this table, okay? So it just tells you the levels of um, some blood content, okay? So uh, it's between 60 milligrams per deciliter and 100 milligrams per deciliter. And if you convert that, we also don't know if you, if you convert 60 milligrams per deciliter to percentage, percentage is grams per 100 milliliter. And deciliter is, um, 100 milliliter. So, yeah, you convert that, it will give you around. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll give you around 3.9, 5.5 millimeter. Yeah, here it says 70 to 100, 70 to 100, which is correct. But, well, 60 to 100, but this is correct as well. <clears throat> okay, so the main buffer uh, system participating in gas exchange, we already know this is the bicarbonate buffer. Um, if you want to know more about the bicarbonate buffer, then check out uh, my video or the teacher's lecture or anything on YouTube pretty much should give you your answer. Okay, so in Mollish test, this is Mollish, uh, hold on. Mollish test is basically a test to um, test for the presence of uh, saccharides, okay? So any saccharides. And what happens during that test is that water is uh, condensed or it's kind of taken out of solution. So it's a dehydration reaction. It, uh, I think it's in the, in the book somewhere, but I, I don't have the book, so I couldn't really get a picture of it. Uh, yeah, and then you have the ratio of um, ions, okay, and the hydrogen ions here, hydrogen one phosphate. And you'll see that yeah. basically, if you want to do this, uh, you can have a pen and paper and a calculator, and then um, hold on. You can calculate the ratio by the concentration. Which add it mm. Yeah, so you can calculate the ratio of uh, hydrogen phosphate ions and then from from of course from the pH of the blood and if you have the pKa and then if you have concentration of each okay then you can do that but for your information this is just knowledge so you don't you don't really need to calculate it but if you want to prove it then you can and the ratio is four to one so yeah and then here you have uh something called picric acid or two four six trinitrophenol um, reaction with maltose. Okay, so first of all, trinitrophenol. Phenol is alcohol. Okay, and you can see here that when it reacts with reducing sugar, so this is any monosaccharide or lactose. Lactose is disaccharide, but it's also reducing. Um, it changes color. Okay, and the reason for that is that because it gets reduced by that sugar. Okay, so when you when you reduce the one of the nitro uh, nitro groups on the phenol, this structure, this is called the phenol. Okay. When you reduce it, you'll see a change in color. And that change is also mahogany red color. I think this is also in the book. But like I said, yeah, I don't have the book uh, right now because. Um, oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just have one question about this um, the like reducing. One. Uh, like uh, reducing sugar is uh, sugar that takes oxygen or uh, like opposite? Or... Yes, a reducing sugar is a, uh, is a sugar that takes an oxygen or gives away a hydrogen. So, oh, okay. yeah, so it's reducing, meaning that it gets oxidized itself. So it takes an oxygen or gives away a hydrogen. In this case, it's giving away its hydrogen because you see this group, the nitro group, it has, it has O2, okay? So when you react that that acid with with a reducing sugar this o2 gets substituted with two h's okay so it, it receives a hydrogen so it's reduced because the sugar is reducing okay so the sugar gets oxidized by either taking the oxygen or giving away the hydrogen in which case it's taken in this case it's, it's given the it's hydrogen to this uh, acid does that make sense yeah, that makes sense. Uh, just one more thing. So the does the oxygen go to the sugar or no? Or uh, just, I think uh, I think this I think this is a condensation reaction. So one oxygen will go to the sugar, and the other one will uh, form water. Oh, okay. I'm not, okay. I'm not exactly fam familiar with this reaction actually because I, I have no idea what this acid is. And yeah, it's just a it's a, it's a reduction reaction, and basically I think you'll have the uh, reducing um, the reducing sugar in excess and the the picric acid, this is what changes color. So this is what you con control the concentration of. I'm not sure. All uh, right, thank you. No problem. Oh, we only have four people, uh, three people. 
even Haitham left. <laughs> okay, so aqueous solution of glucose is isotonic to the blood at the concentration of, okay. So here we can, this sounds like a trick question, but it's not. You can figure, you can figure everything out using the table of, um, where is it? Yeah, this table of reference. Uh, at, you can you can convert these, okay, and you you'll find it's within the the ratio. So sixty milligrams per deciliter. If you convert that, then, then it will be six hundred uh, grams per deciliter, which is um. No, sorry. Zero point two one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I think you're too far away from the mic. Uh, like it, oh, okay. the sound keeps coming in and out. Yeah, sorry. A lot of people told me that actually. I thought this would help. Oh yeah, I think that's better if you put it up. Like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So this question is also answered incorrectly. It's zero point. Um, not supposed to be. Uh, I think I converted it wrong. Uh, this liter is 10. Uh, it's 100 milliliters, so 0 Yeah, this is confusing because both of these answers are correct. Hold on. Both of the both of the options are correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five point four and zero point nine are correct. <laughs> no, five glucose and zero point nine. Okay, sodium chloride. I'm just gonna move on to the next question. Okay, the next question, okay, there we go. So 5% glucose and 0.9% uh, sodium chloride is isotonic for blood. Uh, so is this something that you just like have to know or just common sense or? I think so, I have no idea. Like it says it's five millimoles per liter, uh, 3.9 and 5.5 millimoles per liter or the concentration of glucose in the blood. So therefore an isotonic solution should have 3.9 to 5.5 because isotonic means ha having the same concentration, meaning that they don't, if you put them together, the glucose won't diffuse out because the same concentration on either side. So yeah, I think I think you just have to know that along with the levels of glucose in the blood. Oh, all right. Right, so yeah, 5% five, 5 and 0.9%. Uh, sulfur, so yeah, the component of enzymes and amino acids, you have an amino acid called cysteine. Okay, cysteine is important for the formation of a lot of enzymes and um, fibrous proteins as well. So this, this statement is correct. Is, is the deficiency of it causes convulsions and muscle spasms. No, this is the case for um, carotene phosphate actually. And is responsible for the polarization and depolarization of biological membranes, no, that's sodium and potassium. Because um, in the nervous system, you have something called an action potential, which is produced by um, an, basically a diffusion gradient, whereas you have more sodium inside than potassium, and therefore the inside of this cell is positively charged. So no, sulfur doesn't uh, participate in this. It's a micro mineral, it's not, because uh, we we'll have, we'll have a table for micro minerals. Yeah, there we go. It's not a, a micro mineral because micro minerals are anything that has trace amounts in the blood. But sul sulfur is a macro mineral. You need 13.5 um, grams per day. So it's not uh, a micro mineral. So the answer has to be the first one.
Okay, mark which group of elements contains microminerals. Again, you can, you can refer to this. And iron, yes. Copper, yes. Zinc, yes. So you, you need to know the group of microminerals and macrominerals. Okay, so if it's not calcium, phosphorus, sodium, or magnesium, or sulfur, then it's a micromineral. Of course, unless it's a macromolecule, like um, hydrogen, it's, um, yeah, micro, macro uh, molecule, like, um, hydrocarbons, which have hydrogens and carbons, and nitrogens in, in amino acids, and oxygens in saccharides and, and lipids and everything, basically. So, uh, and these are macro minerals, as we can see here. Uh, and these should not be in the blood at all, or very, very little amount, actually. Silver, uh, sorry, gold, silver, lead, we don't need those in the blood. I think lead, you get poisoned if you have lead in uh, From the polysaccharides listed below, Select those that are homo polysaccharides. So homo, again, if we go back to the this um, slide, homo polysaccharides are made up of only one type of molecule, like starch, like glycogen, like cellulose, like chitin. Okay. So when we go back to the question, uh, uh, which of these are made up of only one type of um, monosaccharides? Chitin, yes. The heparin and heparin sulfate are not their heteroglycans, and we've seen the structure of them. Same with hyaluronic acid. Um, cellulose is made out of beta glucose, which is the same monosaccharide over and over again. So, therefore, it is a um, homoglycan or homosaccharide, and starch as well. Okay, so the most important buffer for erythrocytes this is a tricky one. This is answered incorrectly, hemoglobin. No, because the um, hemoglobin buffer would not function if the bicarbonate, um, if there was a problem with the bicarbonate buffer. If you don't produce uh, H plus, then you'll, the, the oxygen will not be able to dissociate from the hemoglobin. Okay, so it doesn't work if, if the bicarbonate buffer doesn't work. So for the bicarbonate buffer is more important. Okay. And then you have phosphate buffer. So phosphate buffer it acts inside the cells, okay? And also in the urine. So if, if we're talking about blood, it doesn't really act on blood, it acts inside the red blood cells, yes it does, but not in the blood itself, okay? Um, or not much, doesn't contribute too much. So it's mostly for inside the cell. The one that's responsible for outside the cell for gas exchange is bicarbonate, okay? So this is answered correctly. The molecule shown above, so we already went through this before. This is answered incorrectly. This molecule is galactaric acid, okay, because it has carboxylic acids on both ends. It had one on one end and then an aldehyde on the other. Oh, sorry, it does, it does. So this is an aldehyde and a carboxylic acid. So this is galactonic acid. This, this is correct, sorry. Galactonic means that you have a carboxylic acid on one and an alcohol. This is not an alcohol. This is an aldehyde, okay? Galactaric meaning carboxylic acid on both ends, okay, which is wrong. Galactylone is, um, there's no carboxylic acid at all. It's just uh, two alcohols. Um, uh, galactic acid can only come from a strong oxidizer. Yes, exactly, from strong oxidation. So you get, you oxidize the aldehyde at both ends, or an aldehyde and an, an, um, uh, an alcohol at both ends, and you'll get carboxylic acid. Okay, so, perfect. Yeah, you'll get carboxylic acid on both ends, and that's galactic. Here you have one carboxylic acid and one aldehyde. The, the meeting's gonna end because I don't have premium, but uh, I'll, I'll send the other one uh, straight away if it does end. Okay, so we got two more slides and then we got the calculations. We only have about nine or 10 calculations, so it should be over in no time. Okay, so I'll choose the correct uh, statement uh, regarding dilution on buffer capacity. So here we can see the uh, formula for buffer capacity. This is number of moles, by the way. Concentration times volume is number of moles. Okay. And straight away, we know that dilution decreases the concentration. So if you decrease this, what's going to happen? We're going to decrease the number of moles. Okay. So therefore, this expression is going to decrease. Okay. And the change in 